Good morning, everybody. I will begin with the fifth audience of the 187th 80 period of session. This is about the freedom of expression of communicators in Chile. It has been requested by the civil society organizations. I would like to greet them. And I would also like to greet the state. And thank you for being here in this hearing. My name is Julissa Mancon. I am the Mantisha Falcon. I am the first vice president. I am here with Mr. Joel Hernandez, the rapporteur of the country, Mrs. May McCauley, uh, rapporteur for the rights of women, and Re rapporteur Esmeralda Arosemena, the rapporteur for the rights of children, and is the rapporteur of freedom of expression, Pedro Vaca, as well. We are going to start with 20 minutes for the civil society, then the state, then the, com the commission will have its comment on 20, mi 20 minutes as well. And then we will have a 12 minutes round for both of you so as to close the hearing. We will have a digital clock we, which will measure time. You can see it there so that we are clear when we are using, when we are doing the presentations, we have simultaneous interpretation, we have closed captioning, they are broadcasted by webcast and the recording will be in the YouTube channel of the Inter-American Commission. Please have your cameras on and turn off your mics when you are not speaking. Having said that, we'll start with the civil society for 20 minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Madam President, Commissioners, Special Rapporteur. My name is Penesal Matlich and I am representative of the channel La Red. And I am also, and representing the channel is also Carolina Saez the legal director of the channel. I must first point out that I am counselor of the National Institution of Human Rights of Chile. However, I did not participate of that capacity. I participate as an individual. I will reiterate this. For this hearing, I will deal with certain situations that have put freedom of expression at risk in Chile. In particular, I will point out situations that have affected the television channel I am representing. Despite what may be presented at this hearing, there is a vast amount of information that has been provided to the Inter-American Commission from the, by the civil society organizations in some situations that uh, we can that that can retract to the social outbreak of october 18th this hearing however is different we will have the response of the state of chile of the situations that are not completely clear i will state two specific concerns about the channel and I will end with uh, as a, uh, an expression about the situation of freedom of expression in the country. The first situation is uh, the pressure from the presidency of Republic to the editorial line of the channel. This situation or raises from the interview that is exhibited on the internet on Monday, March 15th, to a convicted uh, person convicted by the mar for the murder of Senator Jaime Guzman at the beginning of the 90s. In that interview, which was carried out in compliance with all the protocols established by the prison authority that was uh, ratified by the judge, that the convicted did not uh, did not infringe with any protocol the convicted person expresses that he acknowledges his crime but he offered an political construal of the murder and he has his uh, moral justi justi justification for this murder and another murder that he had planned we may not agree with this opinion, but it's an opinion. Furthermore, it's a political opinion in the public interest. This opinion is highly protected by the Article 13 of the American Convention, Convention of Human Rights. An opinion of this nature, as expected, um, sparked an intense public debate and contrary opinions were also sparked 
which were answered through the expression of those opinions by different names as expected in a democracy. However, the presidency of the Republic did not take the path of debate, of public debate. It took another road. The chief of cabinet, who is a personal assistant of the president of the Republic, calls by calls on the phone and identified uh, as such to the owner of the television group so as to interfere in the ed editorial schedule. The personal assistant of, to the president has acknowledged these facts. And this had been recognized in a judicial action imposed by um, on, in favor of the channel with no coordination. It was at its own motion. And in this report, it was acknowledged that the assistant called the owner of Alba Vision and complained. She said that uh, for, her, sir, for herself, but it's quite doubtful that any person calls to the owner of a television channel so as to express her complaints. She complained about the interview of uh, the convicted person for the murder of Senator Jaime Guzman. To these recognized facts, we can also add uh, other facts. She complained because uh, your channel went to left between commas, or the damage done to democracy with this editorial line is complicated because it spark division in the country. Why did the personal assistant to the president of the Republic call the owner of the media outlets in Miami, if not to interfere in his editorial line? It will be alleged by the representatives of the state of Chile that the personal assistant of the president of the Republic exercised her right of freedom of expression. But can the right of freedom of expression be exercised from a public position? Here, the problem we have is not that anyone has expressed the, her freedom of expression, but it's the presidency of the Republic that speaks, which, is, uh, which has a dissuasive effect. We don't know if this has happened in other channels and the pressure has been the same, but in this case, it was reported and it's made public to the commission. There is not much legal discussion as to whether this is legal or not, but uh, the state finished it here when it sent a, a notice to the rapporteurship of freedom of expression. We held that we didn't know whether the state was going to make other decisions and the National Television Council sanctioned the, the channel due to the interview for different charges that were quite confusing. The sanction was uh, just a sanction without patrimonial effect, but it was a, a, an antecedent, it was a precedent for further sanctions. The National Television Council, which is uh, an autonomous body, sanctioned the channel by six votes against five. And uh, um, he, they sanctioned it because the uh, journalist did not contradict the declaration of the convicted person and the state, which is instituted so that, the, that human rights are respected, questions the ethics and the way in which the journalist carries out the interview. And he says that the journalist did not carry out the interview in an adequate manner. This control, which is very deep, does not seem quite compatible with freedom of expression. Currently, such accusation is uh, with a pending proceeding, legal proceeding, but this uh, fact is a, a symptom. There was a reaction. And it's also important to remember that the National Television Can Council sanctioned six votes to five, and one of the votes in favor, which was the vote that tipped the balance, was from a councillor who is nothing more and nothing less than the president, Pineda's lawyer in various actions, 
and he acting in his capacity as counsel for the National Television Council in a complaint that involved the president of the Republic was not enabled even though we requested it. This was not enabled. Well, compared to other attempts to uh, attack against freedom of expression in the region, a phone call, is somewhat, somewhat minor, but limits must be drawn if these behaviors are tolerated. If they are not uh, sanctioned, then we are open to, uh, to other types of behaviors. Such calls or sanctions could be other classical ways of uh, limiting freedom of expression. It's quite complex, the fact that there is the labeling of certain media out outlets because they have certain tendencies or trends. And as the Inter-American Court of Human Rights has stated, public officials must take care of their statements and statements shall not constitute form of direct or indirect interference or pressure that is harmful to the rights of those who claim to contribute to the public de deliberation by expressing and disseminating their thoughts. That's the first situation. A second situation that is also of concern was born as a result of a program that was aired a few days later and it constituted a satire, a political satire of a general of, uh, of a historical general from the army in the 19th century who gives an in interview on the current events. It's, it was obviously a satire. In fact, the uniform that the general was using was not a uniform of the army, but it was similar to the one to the the real one this sketch which is humorous probably not funny depending on your opinion was a satire and recent cases of corruption in the chilean army cases that are very serious and that have gen several generals on trial thanks to this sketch of the satire in april 18th the three branches of the armed forces make public statements against the satire and against the television station la red these declarations these statements were uh, uploaded to the uh, media to the social media and only the army was uh, signed it the Navy and the Air Force uh, signed it as if, if it was a, an institutional statement that the three branches of the armed forces complain against the broadcast of a satirical problem. Obviously, it's a pressure that intends to discourage such practice. Obviously, this is something that is rejected by freedom of expression. There is no legal justification to support this statement, nor from international or national uh, law. In fact, these declarations should have never been done. But the state is not understanding that they shouldn't be in the same position as a normal citizen. It's not the same that the army, by using public resources, I'm not talking about economic resources, they are using also the public power resources. And it's not the same that the army uses those resources and it's not the same as a citizen that has its own, their own resources. The state does not exercise freedom of expression. This is a good argument to say that there is no justification for these statements. From a purely legal point of view, freedom of expression in the American system belongs to human persons, not to legal persons, not to institutions. So the state should not be exercising freedom of expression. In addition, if a member of the military on its own capacity subscribes or says a statement against a channel, 
we neither could say that they are exercising freedom of expression because they are speaking from a public position. Even public officials, the president, the chief of cabinet, the commanders, the chief of the Navy or the army, they cannot say that they are exercising freedom of expression because it's kind of absurd from the legal point of view because they are agents of the state and they have obligations and limits. And one of those limits is not to interfere with the enjoyment of rights. Could a judge of the Republic give an opinion on a case that he is trying under the freedom, under the concept of freedom of expression? No. Can a commander in chief of the army comment on something that seems bad to him? No, they should, they shouldn't. The army or any public official from their position can give their opinion on matters that are not within their jurisdiction. Will the army or could the army con, uh, comment on what is happening in the country beyond defense matters? Can comment on the country's international politics? No, obviously, obviously. this is absurd. This is not applicable. This is not within the public, uh, the power of the state. Can an individual comment on the international politics of a country? Yes, but with their resources, not with public resources. So the individuals with public resources, and this is very different from agents with public resources and with power. The state, instead of drawing attention to this fact, release a statement in or endorsing the actions of the armed forces. This situation is very complex for us. Now I would like to talk about two general concerns I have regarding freedom of expression in Chile that also affect TV channels and social communicators. The first one has to do with the following during the last two months and within the framework of a criminal investigation by the public minister, the public prosecutor office, there is information that the army intelligence agencies are investigating and also intercepting communications from journalists and social communicators that are involved in reports on the acts of corruption within the armed forces. This is under investigation. However, the fact that the intelligence monitoring or surveillance is not being denied is a problem because the public debate should be that not ignoring this. They should say that they are following the law because in Chile, it is legal to carry out monitoring or surveillance of journalists who investigate fraud in the army. But what we have here is a law problem, a legislation problem, because we have the intelligence law that allows the armed forces in charge of national defense to investigate journalists at a domestic level. It should be noted that in order to carry out phone tapping or telephone interceptions, which is covered by the law of intelligence, this is requested by intelligence officials and it's authorized by the minister by a minister but this is a secret problem a, a procedure but a problem is that usually the arguments should be public sometimes there should be some secrecy in some uh, spheres but it's very difficult the situation here that is the first situation. That is the first case that has been documented and that could be reviewed from the different letters that we sent to the commission or that other civil society organizations sent to the commission. And the second general concern that I have has to do with complaints against social communicators by police officers, especially in the framework of the social outbreak of October the 18th because we see that there is a lack of investigation to elucidate or to determine responsibility. I will not talk a lot about this because the commission has a lot of information after the local visit in January, 2020. For all the aspects described above, it's essential for the state of Chile to explain the situation, not to justify what happened, 
not to explain that what happened is not that bad, but we want for them to explain the specific measures they took so that this not happens again. I want to reiterate that it's not acceptable for the state to use its power or its resources to improperly influence the guidelines or the editorial line of the media, not even indirectly. It is unacceptable that by using public economic resources and power, they disencourage a legitimate exercise of freedom of expression, such as parody and political satire. The state and the agents under its power cannot claim the exercise of uh, they claim the exercise of freedom of expression because this is against the principle of freedom of expression because they want to discourage free speech. Therefore, it is very important, commissioners, that we understand the remedies that the state will implement so that this not happen again because political satire must exist. The questioning of uncomfortable ideas in society, even by people who are in prison that are convicted, even those people should have the right to give their views. And the solution cannot be restricting freedom of expression because we need to promote the functioning of our democratic regime. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Now I would like to give the floor to representatives of the state, please. Good morning, everybody. The delegation of Chile thanks the words of the first vice president of the Inter-American Commission of Human Rights, Mrs. Mantilla, and also the um, opinion of the representatives of civil society. Again, Chile would like to reiterate its serious commitment to the Inter-American system of human rights uh, to the protection of human rights and to the compliance of international obligations that it has ratified. It also recognizes the fundamental work of monitoring of the situation of human rights conducted by the commission in the content through thematic hearings in order to promote dialogue based on the rights enshrined in the American convention. We also would like to thank the hearing or the commission for this hearing. If there is any concern, it is better that there is a space uh, for address this. We would like to thank for the contributions that would help to improve our institutions. In our presentation, we would like to address the issues addressed in the hearing according to Article 62 of the convention that says that the commission receives information regarding human rights. Taking into consideration the information uh, of this hearing, we would like to explain the institutions of Chile that we have to protect freedom of expression. The country report, uh, report prepared by the special reporter for freedom of expression after his visit to Chile in 2016 says that Chile has made a lot of progress in order to protect democracy and to guarantee the fu full exercise of rights and freedom of expression of the citizens and to protect that right in the country. Now, a lawyer, Constanza Richard, that is the head of freedom of expressions of the Secretariat of Human Rights of the Ministry of Justice and Human Rights of Chile will explain the national mechanisms of promotion of freedom of expression. And then Constanza Castillo, that is in charge of political relationships of the Secretariat of State of the Presidency, and also Gabriel Guzman, that is the Chief of Cabinet of the Ministry of Def Defense, will also provide some information. Now I would like to give the floor to Constanza Richard, that is the head of freedom of expression of the Secretariat of Human Rights. Thank you, Ambassador. Distinguished members of the commission, good morning. Also, I would like to greet all the representatives of the civil society. And now I would like to explain how the system of protection of freedom of expression functions in Chile. Our political constitution in its article 1912 uh, establishes the right to give opinion and to 
informed without any previous censorship in a, in, and also to report any abuses of this freedom. It also guarantees the right of any person to edit and to have newspapers uh, according to law. Apart from the right to freedom of expression, it is necessary to take into consideration that the powers of the executive power regarding communication media are very limited. Because of Article 7 of the Constitution, public authorities do not have the powers but those granted by the Constitution and the laws. And constitution, the Constitution and the laws do not grant power to the state to grant concessions, to sanction or to censor the contents of TV channels. Lastly, the constitution says that we, there will be a national TV council that protects the good functioning of media outlets. And this will be regulated by a specific law. And this body has constitutional autonomy. Also in 2019, we have a law on freedom of expression, information, and the exercise of journalism that reinforces the constitutional protection of this right. It established in the article first that uh, freedom of expression is a fundamental right of all persons. This law says that the exercise of these rights implies not being persecuted or discriminated by the opinions of a person. In addition, this law addresses that the protection of every person, natural or legal, to operate and to manage social communication media following the law. It is necessary to have a domicile in Chile, not have been convicted for a crime, to provide information or true information regarding the owners of the media. Also, for the exercise of journalism, it is necessary to keep secrecy regarding the informative sources, which is included in Article 7 of the same law. With regard to the mechanisms to protect freedom of expression in Chile, our legal framework covers several legislative uh, laws that protect freedom of expression and information. And this law is exercised by the different judicial bodies in order to guarantee autonomy in order to correct any violations of freedom of expression and to guarantee the adequate functioning of communication media the tv council that is an autonomous body that is governed by the law 18.838 says the following that the council is not surveilled or has no dependency in other bodies. It has its own regime of independent responsibility. The council is made up of 11 members, which are allocated according to the uh, decisions of the executive power. Um, they could be in their churches for five years. And also, they protect the well-functioning of all the communication media at a national level. It's also to, important to take into consideration that everything that has to do with the concessions of the radioelectric spectrum is regulated by the same law. And this is also under the power of the National TV Council, that is an autonomous body. The law establishes causes for the uh, expiration of the concession of the radioelectric spectrum, but this is not governed by the executive power. Also, any media can report before the council if there is any violation regarding the correct functioning of the um, of this scenario. This has to be written and it has to provide the justification. We also uh, highlight the uh, protection issue, which is which establishes that they can resort to the appeal for by anyone or by its name, and if they 
suffer per, uh, per uh, certain situations in the exercise of their rights as to which there is the uh, possibility to issue an opinion and to inform. The court will adopt the dispositions necessary to impose the right and to ensure the protection of the accused without prejudice to the values, to the rights they can exercise. Another mechanism, the secretary has communication media whose objective is to support regional media in the country. These fund finances projects related to the diffusion of programs which reinforce the role of communication in the social and cultural development of our country, underscoring the identity of each uh, province or of each place. The state has increased the budget for the media increasing in 2019, 10% in, in comparison to the previous year and 8% in 2020. In the period from 2018 to 2020, it has allocated a total of 2 million funds. We can underscore that the protection of the freedom of expression is highlighted by several uh, international observers, several studies so, uh, locate Chile as one of the best countries uh, with civil standards at uh, Latin, uh, Latin American and national level. It generally shares the stance together with Canada, Costa Rica, as the main countries that are friendly with their media and with the uh, praises. The, some other, such as the democratic index of the economist in which Chile occupies the 17th position, the Freedom House Index in which it's edition 2020, locates Chile in the 22nd stance at a global level. In Index Chapultepec of the American Society of Press, in, in, in Chile is a leader in this subject and it is one of the best uh, country in the whole Latin American treatment. It re also related to this, the Rouloy Index created by the World Justice Project ranks Chile in place 18 out of 128, the second in Latin America and the third in terms of freedom of expression. This gives uh, the explanation of, a very, of various efforts of the several administrations made by the different administrations so as to protect this right. I will give the floor to Castillo from the Ministry of the Presidency. Thank you. With the approval of the commission, I would like to start telling about the conflict of uh, the call to the owner of the red. Mauricio Hernández Marambuena was detained in Chile for being one of the authors of the uh, murder of a senator in democracy. And then he escaped and he was detained in Brazil for the kidnapping of a Brazilian uh, businessman. Then he was extradited to Chile. His interview obviously raised polemics in the country for two reasons. In the first place, because it says that the National Television Council received 311 reports against the program. The reports are of two issues mainly. It increases or it um, promotes hate speech and it um, puts in risk social peace. During the interview, it affects the limits of uh, freedom through the panel of support to the murderer. There is no critical reflection or opposition. The channel was sanctioned by the National Television Council on May 2, on May 2nd, and we can hand in the record where there is the basis of the sanction. In the sanction, the council says that it's a, 
the ideological monologue with messages that justify violent facts such as an alternative for political action they interviewed says that the violent expression the creation of fear and the social rebellion are the ways in which changes in society can be attained today additionally the interview infringes administrative rules of the um of the army because he had used a cell phone that was granted during the pandemic this uh the police would not oppose to interviews but certain protocols must be met that in this case were not respected and this led to uh in as uh, an administrative sanction the judge only pronounced itself about the use of the cell phone but not about the protocols that are in in force since 2014 that are about the request of the interviews as to the facts these are not known because they were part of a remedy presented filed before the judiciary in Chile and the person who was requested recognizes this call but maintains that the, con the conversation had a different tenor. We know the version of one of the journalists and one of the persons intervening in that call but we do not know the um, opinion of revision and gonzalez one of the person of la red in miami magdalena diaz was chief of staff but uh, but as from december 2020 before the facts she stopped being that in that position she was an advisor to the president only as she says in her report, she made a call on her own motion and she manifested a position which was recognized in several letters due to the issuance of the program. She didn't question the line of the uh, channel and she says that the phone call was personal and she had a good conversation with the journalist with whom he she had not a direct uh, relation with the executives of the channels. We would like to express the following points. The authority acknowledged that she made this call without receiving any instructions nor the application of any uh, regulation. The state does not want to intervene in the um, in the communication media and wants to respect its autonomy. They have no public authority for the decisions that can impact the rights of the media outlet. They do not have the power to sanction the channel since, as it was mentioned, this function falls on a body with institutional autonomy. This fact is being treated by the, by the courts the there has been uh, if there has been an infringement of the constitutional right there can be the, there can have the reestablishment of the law pursuant to article 20 of the constitution the government will obey any resolution by the court i will give the floor to javier kochman the chief of staff of the ministry of defense thank you thank you I would like to greet all the persons here, the Rapporteur for Freedom of Expression. Mr. Kogman, we cannot listen to you very well. Can you hear me better? Yes, but too low. I don't know if you can adjust the volume. Is it better? Okay, I will refer to two facts. The first one being the espionage to journalists by the armed forces. There is one element there that was not informed about, but it belongs to a fact that happened in 2017 during the government of Michel Bachelet. And there were documents uh, that were relevant and whose existence and content should not be at the disposal of the public in general. Due to this leak, 
the Directorate of Intelligence of the Army pursuant to, to a law that came into force in 2004, in 2004, started a proceeding so as to investigate the leak. They have internal contracts that depend on the chief or external controls as well that belong to the courts of justice or the chamber of deputy which created a special commission of control of intelligence in the state made up by seven deputies of the different parties it, they require the authorization of the ministry of the court of appeal This ministry will, um, will solve without the affection of third parties. Then the person who requested this intervention will inform in writing as soon as possible to the judge that granted this. We would like to underscore the existence of safeguards through uh, judicial authorization for wiretapping and the possibility to carry out the actions before the courts, these safeguards have always operated in full. The wiretapping was authorized by a judge and during a certain period, the Politic power has operated by sessions of the intelligence by the, the Chamber of Deputies in 2019 and in a session in 2021. In the same train of thoughts, in March 2021, the army was instructed to carry out an internal investigation so as to determine whether the processes were according to the current legislation and such investigation is still in course there are two there are currently two cause cases that are being investigated with the same facts the first one was initiated in august 2019 before the military justice for infringing the right or the duty to uh, of to of secrecy. The second one initiated in 2019 due to the illegal intervention of inter wiretapping. Both cases are pending. Therefore, it's not possible to deliver details as to that one, as to those ones. Sorry, uh, Mr. Kopman, I you are already out of time, but if you need to authorize me, if you want to use some of the meters that you have for the second round, we agree. So we are going to discount this extra time from your second round. Regarding the second uh, item regarding the TV program uh, broadcasted by La Red, there is a person that uh, plays the role of a commander general and that also affects the pride of the commander or the general and also the uh, pride on the honor of all members of the military forces. And also we see that there are a lot of um, um, slander and insults to the army. For example, they say we are we do nothing during the year. We just work when there is a tsunami or a hurricane, etc. And that's all we do along the year. So because of these insults and we decided to issue some communiques with the authorization of the Ministry of Defense. The Ministry of Defense issued a public statement to say that it's not acceptable to uh, use parodia or political uh, parodia to um, uh, 
insult those who protect human rights and the rights of people. And therefore, the public statements were aimed at communicating the work of the armed forces, which was uh, undermined by the TV program and by the parodia. The armed forces never requested a limit, a limit to the freedom of expression, but they just explain uh, or provide explanations, explanations regarding a situation that was being uh, that was in question. For example, there are 5,000 military officers that are helping to deal with the COVID-19 pandemic, or we use another uh, explanation. We would like to say that the armed forces are complying its co with its commitment to citizenship um, and to protect the country. So therefore the armed forces acted within its jurisdiction because the legislation allows the military forces to defend the honor of the institutions that make it up. For example, uh, any slander could be considered an offense against the military forces. And also this is under Article 220 of the Rules of Procedure of the Armed Forces, and therefore the Armed Forces have the right to demand being respected, especially against those who slander them. The Armed Forces just sent a letter to the director of the TV channel and did not exercise any legal action against the channel, even though they have the authority to do so. The armed forces uh, are not enabled to issue statements, especially when it has to do with their own functioning, especially uh, if there, because there is a record about that. The uh, government is not against satire and is not against criticism. However, it is important to inform that the communications of the armed forces are not restricting freedom of expression. They show a position or a stance regarding a situation or a public situation because they have been accused of very serious uh, acts such as the violation of the human rights of soldiers. Representatives of the state, you are using all your time. I'm just letting you know. It would be good for you to have some extra time towards the end, but you decide because I have, uh, you're using up all your time and the goal of the hearing is to have a second round of comments. So if you agree, we will stop here, Mr. Coleman, with uh, all due respect, it would be good to have two presentations and not a single presentation. That is a protocol of the hearing. One thing is to have one or two extra minutes, but you've been talking for over six minutes. So the executive secretary will let me know uh, how much time you used so far. So now I would like to give the floor to the commissioners. And first, I would like to give the floor to Commissioner Hernandez, who is the country reporter. Thank you. Thank you, Madam President. I would like to greet the uh, civil society and the petitioners of the hearing. And I also would like to greet the representatives of the state in charge of Ambassador Jaime Tum. I think that at this hearing, we need to clarify three things. As it has been said from the very beginning, the goal of the thematic hearings of the commission is to exchange information. We are not here in a contentious proceeding in which we could analyze the allegations of each of the parties regarding the alleged facts. But what I think that it's very important for the commission is to get all the information available. Now we have received sufficient information, but the commission would like to know in detail uh, anything or any information in written as we already received information in the past. The second thing that I would like to stress 
is that there is a shared interest between the state, the petitioners and the commission to guarantee and respect the right to freedom of expression. I think that, that we are here for that. The commission has granted this hearing because of the recent events which have been discussed before me, but also the commission has been following up some measures and actions taken against journalists that are covering the different social protests that continue in the territory of Chile after the social up, uh, outburst of 2019. So this is a reason why we decided to, congrat to grant this thematic hearing. And the third point that I think that we should consider, and it's very important to, to stress this, we need to stress democratic institutions because we know they are sound and vigorous in Chile. We have a system of authentic division of powers, of counterbalances in Chile. And there are the victims or the alleged victims can resort to these institutions to demand the defense of their rights. And after listening to the petitioners, I cannot understand the allegation regarding the warning against the La Red Channel. I don't understand the legitimate end of that sanction or warning, but I believe that we will be better, we will understand the situation better if we receive more information. And also, I want to say this because the, for the commission, it is fundamental for uh, the, uh, that the respect is dominant in a democratic state, especially the respect for freedom of expression. That's why we are here. Therefore, uh, we were concerned regarding the reactions to the sat satire made in La Red Channel, because in any democratic society, the different public powers are always subject to criticism, even when this criticism is done in a ironic way. We know that there are limits to freedom of expression. We all know that. But I also need to say that that is part of the reality of our world. Also, in order to conclude, I would like to propose something. I would like to propose something to the state of Chile. The last visit of a special rapporteur to Chile was done by Edison Lanza in 2016. Five years have elapsed. And I think that we have the ideal context so that the special rapporteur for freedom of expression, Pedro Vaca, if he is available, could visit the country and to assess in situ the situation of freedom of expression in Chile. So that is all I want to say, Madam President. Thank you, Commissioner. Now I would like to ask the Commissioner May McCauley if she has any comments. Um, thank you, Madam President. Good morning. Um, good morning to the representatives of the Red Channel and good morning to uh, the esteemed representatives of the state of Chile. Um, I, Madam President, I wish to yield my time to the special rapporteur who is an expert and having heard the country rapporteur, I don't think I need to use up any time. So he will have enough time to intervene, thank you. Gracias, Commissioner. Le pregunto a la Commissioner Arosemena. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Arosemena, would you like to say something? Sí, Commissioner. Commissioner, you have the floor. Good morning, everybody. I would like to greet the 
petitioners of the hearing. I would like to thank you for all the information that you presented today. I also would like to greet the distinguished representatives of the state of Chile. I think that this is a great opportunity. I would like to stress the value of these spaces that the commission has for the exchange of information in order to collect or to understand the positions of the parties and to assess and to monitor the situation. As Commissioner Joel Hernandez was saying, this is not about uh, creating a conflict or it's not a contentious hearing, but in this opportunity, due to the relevance of this theme in our region, I think that we need to stress the exercise of the right to freedom of expression, but also freedom of information and to contrast or compare information. So I would like to stress this time that value that any form of communication can have, especially now that we have so many communication media right now. But I would like to stress the importance of public debate, the importance of criticism, because there, are, there is a space for all the stances and views. And that is the position of the petitioners of the hearing. And according to the information that we received from the state, we know that there is openness. So what we need to make sure is that this not lead to any type of aggression or to any stances that would discourage or disincentive this right or this uh, possibility of having this debate. There will be some who are against one or other situation. For me, the value of this hearing is regarding the consolidation of democracy and the exercise of this right. Thank you, Madam President. And I agree with Commissioner Margaret that we would like to give some time for the special rapporteur to answer. Thank you, Commissioner. I will give the floor now to the special rapporteur of freedom of expression. Thank you, Madam President. I will start by thanking this hearing and to all the petitioners and the state, also the commissioners and the country rapporteur. I think this is a very important moment because we are somehow sharing information that the office has received and, he, and I think it's very valuable to dialogue now, but it also implies certain challenges as to the strengthening of the democratic institutions. I would like to start with a general positioning that is the democratic systems have to be thankful towards the press all the time because their work contributes to a better understanding of their institutions. This includes the public forces, the armed forces and the security forces. And that is why the journalists have to be protected. Whenever we have journalist content, there are uh, two ways for democracy. On the one, is one is the path of disagreement, which is faced by including more information without labeling those who take part of the public debate. And on the other hand, is the road or the path of becoming aware of which are the mechanisms that have to be highlighted. The Inter-American Court has had the opportunity to talk about the characteristics of freedom of, ex of expression of the people with responsibilities within the, within the states, and this has posed a very important debate on the scope of 
um, freedom of expression of public officials. And I think that the Inter-American Commission can help to uh, have this discussion in the Chilean state. In this opportunity, I feel I have the duty to convey a fear that has been deposited in the rapporteurship by several journalists. And this is not only about legal characteristics or the characteristics of the democratic institutional institutions, but it's an environment to exert freedom of expression. I can say this, and I ha and I say this as a as, as a warning, not as a, a value an assessment. There are certain journalists that feel that there are no enough safeguards for the journalist and for the press. And this is something that the Chilean society has to deal with, has to face. And based on the uh, positioning of Commissioner Joel Hernandez, we have to contribute to the improve of such uh, environment. This has, uh, this is sometimes named as self censorship. These facts that have been posed in the hearing, it's something that it's not only the La Red Channel denouncing or reporting, but it's something that everyone see. And um, there are other people that can be discouraged to talk about other issues. So I think we have to think about improving the environment of the of journalism in general and to avoid self-censorship. I have several questions and I can offer technical support including the possibility of carry out a visit. And I, the first question is, I understand that there are several investigation proceedings about these facts. The estate, which is the time you believe that we can have in terms of the resolution of these legal actions, of these legal proceedings, because on the one hand, we understand the framework, the due process of law, and the, the evidence, collection of evidence, but there are certain protection measures for the, uh, the journalists and we would need to have some estimation as to that. And I have an, a special question about this satirical. I know we have not much time, but when we talk about defending the honor of the army, I would like to ask, what is the level of assessment between the tolerance of a satirical joke and reaching that conclusion? We understand that there is an affectation to honor us from this satirical, but I would like to, 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 to know which was your assessment whether if it was an assessment made on the army itself. And I think that's important because the voice of all public officials has the role of guarantor of the freedom of expression of, the, of all the citizens, but the voice of the armies has a very important role, a role, a role of guarantor as well. And the uh, evaluation of the criticism made to them has certain uh, has certain valoration. I would like to thank the state and the representatives for this hearing. I think that here we have a situation that has to do with the environment of freedom of expression that we need to improve so as to um, in strengthen democracy and i think that they are inspired in the inter-american convention thank you thank you rapporteur i will give the floor to the civil society by in 12 you have 12 minutes thank you madam president i will make some expressions that i think that are necessary according to in relation to what was uh, said by the state and the members of the special rapporteur. 
I think that here the facts are not controverted. This is something that is very important. This is a hearing that in which the facts are being disseminated. And here the facts have not been questions. They have been explained. I would like to underscore what was stressed by the state that they declare that there is no interference on the editorial line of the channels and that is a commitment that we really value towards the future. I hope that we do not have other risks that call our attention or that relate to the uh, impact on human rights. It would be also a very positive signal uh, by the state towards the commission and towards the communicators to allow for a visit of the special rapporteur as the one Isoldans carried out to Chile. I think that the in loco visit in 2020, there was a, 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 I think that a visit of this kind could be really, really interesting. As to what was posed by the state, the exposition of the space was of the state was based on structural criteria that the internal regulations have a, an adequate ruling, but the approach of this hearing has to do with the results, the outcomes, and has to do with the concrete effects of the infringement of human rights or the special situations that have jeopardized freedom of expression. We know that we can speak about domestic law, but if that law, if that rulings do not reflect an integral, a comprehensive protection for freedom of expression, then we have to uh, reframe its structure. If it exists, it doesn't mean that it will protect. That is something that we know, especially in Latin America, if we talk about other states. What I also want to say is that the internal law discussions have rights discussions have not to do with this inter-American space. We are uh, making a contrast of attitudes and behaviors of the state as to what is guaranteed by the Inter-American Convention. The fact that the National Council, Television Council is autonomous or which depends or not of the executive, it doesn't mean that it doesn't it's, it's not a public institution and it has to be aligned with the Inter-American Convention. And the third aspect is that we, can, we must think, think that the censorship is not only materialized in previous direct uh, censorship, but censorship or indirect censorship are sometimes subtle, quite uh, disguised, and they try to affect freedom of expression. And that is where we have to focus. And I would like to remind you of what the Rapporteur of Freedom of Expression has said in the base document, which is the Inter-American Framework, that says that public officials have two specific duties. One to make sure that their statements do not violate human rights. I will quote uh, the case API. And the second one, which we believe is also at risk here, which is the duty of ensuring that statements do not constitute a direct or indirect interference of those who disseminate their thoughts. Closing a media outlet is quite apparent. And we are not speaking about this here. We are speaking about the discouraging effects, not only for a channel, but for other people. Some other little media outlets, community radio, the most it's most likely that they are not going to carry out a satirical program of the armed forces if they have to face this response. As to the proceeding of the Television Council, it's a state institution, as I have already said, this uh, 
I, I have to say that it is under judicial review, but it doesn't mean that this institution, which is made up by members of the presidency and one of the members, which is the attorney for the presidency, has have a certain, a very concerning criteria because the assessment standard of what constitutes an and undue use of communication in a public channel is quite difficult. The objective is, as Commissioner Hernandez was saying, the legitimate objectives here are not clear. And I can clarify this from another point of view. What should the channel have done or the journalist so that he was not, no, not junction, sanctioned? What he should have done was not to interview the interview the, the person he was interviewing. He had to question him and he had to have panelists so as to uh, counteract that. So that is the imposition made by the state. You can agree or not with the opinion. Of course, we are not. Uh, you do not, we do not agree with the justification of the murder, but the opinion of this person who is uh, convicted is also relevant because in Chile, there were also interviews carried out to violators of human rights. And they have, and some people have said things that were terrible, but not because of that, we can say that their messages have to be censored or eliminated or their channels have to be press, pressed so that they eliminate them. The fact that the council received 300 reports doesn't say anything to us because it's not a contest of popularity. In the defense of human rights, sometimes we are against public opinion. And the messages that create more, uh, that, that create that uncomfortableness in the, in the communication aspects are those who, the ones who have to be respected. Because generally the comments that are supported by the public are the ones that are going to be disseminated and then we're going to say that freedom of expression is censored about uh, regarding what the majority wants. And that's not the idea of freedom of expression. As to the way in which the interview was carried out, the judge that assessed the sanction to the uh, convicted person established that he did not stop complying with any of the measures by the uh, police or protocols established by the police for the interview. If the security official did not comply with the pro protocols, it's a problem of the security staff. It's not the problem of the convicted person and he has the right to have a cell phone during the pandemic to get in touch to with the people that visit him and to be visited in a virtual way with a journalist who made him an interview. As to the situation of the armed forces, the National Council refers only to the interview and there were no um, reports and uh, they were not sanctioned because of the reports received. But the situation of the armed forces also places us in another position, in a different stance. It has been said that the armed forces were authorized to say what they said, which was a direct opposition to the parody. So the question is, is this relevant? Yes, because the Ministry of Defense can authorize these, whether it was uh, authorized or not, is a matter of debate, but as, but as from the point of view of freedom of expression, 
it can have an act that affects freedom of expression. No, clearly not. So the fact that it has been authorized or not doesn't erase the fact if the Ministry of Defense has issued a statement was probably it would have been it wouldn't have been so damaging the spokesperson for the government gave an interview and he said that he rejected the words of the convicted because he had murdered a senator but this he he because he said this and it's okay but he said this by affecting freedom of expression so if the authorities are obliged to defend the honor of the officials they should have started a criminal action because they are forced to do so and if not, they are committing an administrative offense. And then we have also uh, the a slander. And to defend the honor of an institution is not a legitimate end for those statements. And in order to conclude, parody is fiction that person does not exist. That is a parody, and everybody knew that this was not that way. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now I would like to give the floor to the state. You have seven minutes. Thank you. We would like to thank again for this possibility and for the discussion that has been created. We would like to see the details of the resolution of the National TV Council that has constitutional autonomy. The law establishes that pluralism is one of the criteria to determine the correct functioning of a media outlet. And in the TV program, there was a lack of due pluralism. And the resolution also recognizes freedom of expression of the channel and of the interviewee. The channel chooses who they interview and the interviewee has a right to give the interview but also the TV channel needs to guarantee pluralism since there was a lack of political diversity. At least there were a lack of officials from different parties. And the state is questioning the contribution of the program to public debate if there is no diversity or pluralism. Nothing of this actions or these statements are uh, threats. The petitioner, that is to say the La Red Channel, as well as all media outlets are subject to the rights that we have mentioned. The channel continue to work with an independent editorial line. Their programming has not been modified after this fact and their uh, presenters continue working freely. With regard to the question of a special rapporteur Pedro Baca, the remedy of protection should be resolved in the coming weeks, at least in the uh, card. Now I would like to give the floor to Javier Compande of the Ministry of Defense. Thank you. I just want to make reference to the satire or parody to express three final things. First, there was no limitation to the freedom of expression of the channel. There was no censorship because the program was broadcasted and there was no restriction or sanction after the program. And the channel has broadcasted several programs, has continued broadcasting some satires and still has the question program online available. The armed forces just I sent a letter, but there was no harassment or threats to the channel. And therefore, the actions of the armed forces are not an attack towards uh, communication media. And those statements just reject the insults and the slander of the parody of the program. We are following the principles of 
uh, respect of civil authority. And in addition, we have the principle of non-deliberation that explain, implies prohibiting armed forces from participating in the public debate, from pronouncing uh, they are prohibited from pronouncing in the public debate regarding some things that are not within their sphere of work. And also, we just implemented a proportionate measure for this situation. Ambassador? You have the floor. Thank you. I just would like to conclude my presentation by thanking this space for dialogue because we have been able to show the position of the state. After what La Red Channel said, we would like to thank the participation of the different commissioners and the special rapporteur. We also share what Commissioner Rosemena said with regard to or oh, the diversity of voices and the importance of criticism. Also, we also received the suggestions of country rapporteur, Commissionado Hernandez and the special rapporteur, and we will be evaluating this. Uh, and we are very thankful for this opportunity. I think that the state has been able to answer many of the questions that were asked and that is fruitful for the discussion. Thank you. Thank you. In order to conclude this hearing, I would like to express on behalf of the commission, the greatest recognitions to this space, the different allegations of civil society in order to reflect on freedom of expression, the standards and the general context, apart from the situation of a specific TV channel. And I also would like to thank the representatives of the state for being here, for the information they provided by their commitment of not interfering that I would like to highlight. As it has been already said by Commissioner Hernandez, the Inter-American Commission calls upon the states to uh, improve collaboration. And that would be a good idea to have a visit of the special rapporteur to the country. Freedom of expression is a fundamental value in our democracies. Our past, present, and future history prove this. And this space for the Inter-American Commission is so important. Last year, in its advisory opinion number 26, the Inter-American Court reiterates and points out the importance of freedom of expression and the relationship of democracy and human rights. And freedom of expression is therefore of absolute relevance. Thank you for being here. I would like to close today's hearing. Thank you. Gracias. Gracias. Gracias.